Hello everyone. Today I'm going to present you my Applied Electromagnetic Storm project. I am Hüseyin Zemamoğlu from Bilkent University and I'm studying to become an electrical and electronics engineer. And as a part of my course I need to create a character resonator and then test it under given conditions. So in this video presentation I will present you my character resonator its performance results and also talk a little bit about the problems that I faced during the application of my project. So before starting like with the design and with my cavity resonator, I should first tell you what is what a cavity resonator is. A cavity resonator basically is a microwave device and we need the cavity resonator because at high frequencies capacitors or inductors began to began to act strange. Like because of high frequencies, they lose their effectiveness, so we need different circuit elements in order to store magnetic energy or electrical energy or in order to create filters. So a character resonator basically is a closed waveguide, like it's a, it's a metallic hollow box. Like inside, it's filled with an, it's filled with air or another or another material, another electromagnetic material. And the point is, it's basically a closed waveguide. It can be rectangular as seen in the picture or it can be circular and as we stated before character resonators can be used as filters and tuners or also can be used to measure the frequency of an electromagnetic signal. They have really really high quality factors higher than capacitors and inductors and that makes us that and that makes it really 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 convenient for us to use character resonators in high frequency applications. So let's start the project. In our project, I am asked to design a cavity resonator that, that have a resonant frequency between 500 megahertz to 1 gigahertz. I chose the, my resonant frequency, the frequency that I want to that I want the cavity resonator to work as 1 gigahertz, and I also choose the operating mode as T101. I don't know if you are familiar with this, but cavity resonators have operating modes. And basically, operating modes are uh, basic operating modes determine this inside. I related with the signals, the electromagnetic signals, and the magnetic signals inside the cavity resonator, because a cavity resonator has more than one resonant frequency, and for each resonant frequency, we have different modes. And different modes means that different modes affect the way that the electromagnetic waves or magnetic waves propagate in the cavity resonator and the ball is also the direction and the magnitude so let's do our calculations we know the frequency formula like we take it from the book and it's as written as here here m and then p denote the mode of the cavity resonator basically for t101 we have m as 1 and as 0 and p as 1 so if you plug in the values and if we apply the condition that A should be bigger than B because we want the dominant mode to be T101 which I will mention uh, right after I'm done with these calculations we obtain A at approximately 22 centimeters and D at approximately 21 centimeters we also have to find the value for B we couldn't find it from the equation but we here apply the condition that D should be bigger than B this means that B should be 18 centimeters uh, the point is, uh, the point that we should talk about is the dominant mode. The dominant mode, basically, the dominant mode is the mode which has the lowest resonant frequency. And in order to determine whether our character resonator works fine, we should. Uh, I decided to have the lowest, lowest resonant frequency as a resonant frequency that I want to do my experiment on. So I choose T101 as a dominant mode and in order to satisfy the in order to satisfy the conditions, I applied A should be bigger than D should be bigger than B. This like this combination gives me the smallest resonant frequency, which should be equal to 1 gigahertz, as this calculation suggests. The point is in the laboratory work, we are also asked to design a, an antenna. A monopole antenna so that we could excite the cavity resonator and the monopole antenna has lambda over should has a length of lambda over 4 like this is something that we know again from the book this, this is a formula because it's a monopole antenna it's it's its length is one fourth of the wavelength 
and as one can see it's 7.5 centimeters for a, for a, for a wave that has f equals to 1 gigahertz okay so here is my resonator i know it doesn't look that much nice but the point is i created it by using a shoe box but i cut the shoe box and i i plastered and i taped and I, and it's and it's inside as seen from the like from the from the other thing that's inside is covered with aluminum foil the reason why I choose aluminum foil is it's cheap and you can easily apply aluminum foil even though it's not really a perfect conductor and also it's and I believe it's sufficient for the job so this is my cavity resonator and for this experiment we have two parts the first part is is like is the, is the one that's shown in this picture basically we are trying to determine the resonance frequencies we are using the mode of the network analyzer to determine the to determine the resonance frequencies of our cavity resonator and in the second part we will measure the tangent law we will measure down so we will measure the return loss values and determine where determine where our resonator worked as it should so let's talk about our results so as expected we have more than one we have more than one resonant frequencies and this is for different modes of our cavity resonator the first frequency is 883.42 megahertz this should be 1 gigahertz but a deviation is expected because as you saw our cavity resonator is not that perfect is not perfect and also our measuring system is not perfect and at the end in the conclusion part we will put much more emphasis on the reasons why we measured this different frequency our f2 is 9 942.55 megahertz sorry 75 megahertz like it's the second higher is the second lowest resonant frequency and our final resonant frequency uh, that 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 is between 500 megahertz to 1.5 gigahertz is 1.20 gigahertz and as you can see from the picture these are the places where we see a sharp like we we see a minimum in this in this in this screenshot of our network analyzer so the second part of our experiment as you can see we measured the we we we, we like we added another antenna to our box uh, the antenna is located uh, is located at the midway between the between the the our main antenna that we use to excite our cavity resonator so it's it's really close to that and the reason why i put it is because in a cavity resonator in at resonant frequencies there are sending waves that are formed and what we want to do is we want to measure the measure the like amplitude of the sending wave like the returning wave i'm sorry the returning wave so that we could we could see the effectiveness of our cavity resonator unfortunately our cavity resonator was not very effective and we obtained minus 20 db for a for the first and for the first two frequencies and for the last frequency we obtained minus 15 decibels uh, you can see the values from the pictures but i'm not going to go over them because the decibels is more important than us i'm sorry the decibels are more important for us and the thing is we we wanted a we wanted that loss smaller than minus some sort of bigger than minus 10 db but unfortunately we couldn't obtain them due to imperfect design of our system and also due to problems locating locating antennas and here in this conclusion part we will talk in detail so the first reason that we didn't like that we didn't manage to get like perfect results or acceptable results is because of the aluminium foil aluminium foil is not a perfect conductor and it's prone to folding so basically when you're creating the box it it falls inside the box and because it falls it doesn't become like a perfect smooth surface so that the waves the waves can like bounce back perfectly so here you have oblique incidences like oblique reflection and this affects the sending wave pattern inside the cavity resonator and also the, our box is not like a like a ready-made box i mean we didn't like we didn't get like a shoe box and use it but we tried to create our own box and since we try to create our own box, it's very possible that we made mistakes because we use a ruler and we use scissors. And it's pretty possible for me to make like mistakes during this process, like measurement mistakes or cutting mistakes. And also, again, we use a ruler and if, and like a uh, like a scissor in order to in order to like add the antenna to our system. 
And we also try and we also had to rip the aluminium foil so that the antenna can excite the system. And this caused again this caused like instability in the system because like the process is prone to errors. And antennas again, as I said it before, they cause problems during assembly, and this is also valid for the second antenna in which we had to alter the box because our box, this was a design fault on the behalf of us, our box was not like prepared like in order to like was was not really prepared to like have different antennas inserted and uh, into it because it was like as you can see it was a closed system and as it's a, it, and is like as as like as it's plastered we need to like we need to open the plaster we need to cut the aluminium foil and then add the antenna and then replaster them and then close them and again do the same thing again because of because of the design of our box and because of this it's pretty possible that we made mistakes during this process and we obtained these errors so overall we managed to design a character resonator that worked fine for the given frequencies i mean it's reasonable that we obtained this shift like it's uh, uh, how can i say this it's 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 expected that we we saw a shift in frequency values and it's and it's like a reasonable it's an acceptable shift but the return loss is not expect acceptable because it's too high but as we stated there are some errors that we made during the design of this uh character resonator and during i'm not sure not design but uh, but uh, uh but during creating the character resonator and we will try to refrain from them if the need arises for us to create a new cavity resonator. So I would like to thank you for listening to my presentation and I would like to apologize for the mistakes that I did. I was kind of a little bit stressed. But the point is we managed to design a cavity resonator that worked fine. And if you have any questions or any comments or anything unclear, just give me, just like ask me in the comments and I will try to answer them. So have a good night and have a good, by the way, have a good day.